Welcome to the Logic in Life Coaching Podcast, episode 16. Everyone wants happiness and success, and we know how to get you there. Come listen to the Leadership Society of Arizona as we teach a proven logic to help you simplify life, overcome challenges, and predict the future. You're listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. My name is Chuck Solanis, and I'm joined by none other than Dr. Jacob Kashiwagi. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's great to be your special guest on this podcast, Chuck. And we enjoy having you, Dr. Jacob. We have some other questions for you today. I'm and so, so th- I, I'm, I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the topic is going to be about information. Uh, how can you identify accurate information? I mean, there's so much information available on internet and uh, among friends, they share certain stats. You're not sure what's true. And so a lot of times I'm looking at one study on health and I think, oh, well, I'm going to be healthy if I do this. And then I find a contradictory study about health saying the exact opposite that I would be better if I didn't eat bananas or I'm better if I do eat bananas. And then I think, well, none of the information is true. So how do I go about sifting the false information from the true information? Okay, so um, this is a very intriguing question here for me. Um, I have a question for you before I begin. Why do you care if it's accurate information? I feel like my success is contingent on me following an accurate idea. Okay, so let me ask you another question then. Suppose you found something that wasn't 100% accurate, but it was accurate enough to help you in your life. Okay. Would that be good enough for you? I, I guess. I mean, if it helps me to get the desired result, I would think that's fine. Okay, let me ask you another question. Suppose a piece of information was 100% accurate, but um, it doesn't help you. It's something that you can't do. For example, suppose the true answer to the best health is you can only eat spinach and kale and you can't eat anything else. <laughs> so um, does that help you? <laughs> I, I would probably put some more spinach and kale in my diet. But <laughs> Okay, so the, the reason I ask these questions is, you know, at, as from your answers, um, accurate information is only as good as it helps you, only as good as you're able to follow it and are willing to follow it. You know, a lot of people, they might know that fast food is not good for them, but they will still eat it. Maybe out of necessity, maybe out of convenience, maybe out of they just don't really care about their health. So it's really important that we, we shape our mind around this topic, which is first, why do we want the accurate information? The majority of people actually don't want 100% accurate information. They have like a threshold, right? You got a threshold of this is the level you're at. And this might be 100% information. You don't really want this information because this information is going to be too extreme for you. You really want something like this, right? You want something just a little bit above so it gets you a little bit better within your range. It doesn't take too much effort to improve. And as you get to that level, then you're thinking, I want to go to this level and then this level. And pretty soon, eventually, you're ready for 100% accurate information on how to be healthy, um, in shape, um, intellectual, uh, whatever it might be that you're looking for. Lots of money, whatever it might be. Um, but now with that in mind, now we have to understand, well, how do you get better information than, you know, what you currently have? 
And that's pretty simple. You just go looking. <laughs> wow. Okay, you don't seem as as um, impressed as I thought you were going to be about that answer. You know, um, <laughs> it seems like I'm back at square one. <laughs> See, look. The, the one thing that keeps people from getting more accurate information is just their desire to know it. And if you don't have desire to know it, you're not going to look into things. You're not going to research things. Amazingly, you can get really accurate information without looking too far and without paying any money. But the question is, like you come to, is, well, how do you know which one is accurate? Well, you don't really have to know that because there's a natural law. And the natural law here is that you are attracted to things that you like. Meaning, when you go looking through all these articles, you might find five articles, maybe three of them contradict each other, and maybe you really, out of these three, you really like one that has a lot of good information. That might not be 100% accurate. In fact, it might be only like 20% accurate. But because the goal is just to get information that can make you better, it doesn't even matter. You're going to be attracted to the information, the article, that will help you the most in your, time, in your life right now. Okay, so if I'm like attracted to an article that encourages me to... Um, Start an alcohol addiction. I don't think I would find an article like that. But. No, but but say you are a drug addict and and you're you're consuming things much worse than alcohol right now. That's going to kill you much faster than alcohol. Well, maybe actually that's the next step for you to getting off the hardcore drugs or whatever. Well, you know I have no clue what I'm talking about. But you get the idea, right? <laughs> right. So it could be a stepping stone to get you out it, of it. It could be a stepping stone. And then once you get on the alcohol, well, that's not a very good habit, but compared to the drugs, it was. Mm -hmm. And then from the alcohol habit, then you might find more articles saying, hey, alcohol is not good for you. And you'll be like, whoa, I never knew this. <laughs> and then you'll be like, oh, the next step is eating lots of candy. Or oh. some. <laughs> yeah, some, 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 people, some people say sugar is a worse drug than a lot of the even illegal drugs. But <laughs> okay, and, and then or maybe you're like, oh, not candy, like fruit. I'm just gonna eat a lot of fruit now, and and then from the fruit you get to the vegetables, and then eventually. <laughs> dependent upon your ability to understand, your ability to grow, your ability and willingness to accept the truth or what's accurate, you finally get to the point you really want to get to. Mm. Now, everyone starts at different levels. So the majority of people, they're not going to believe the article saying drink a lot of alcohol. That's probably maybe like maybe 1% of society. But they might believe, hey, maybe eat a lot of fruits or just eat meat. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of people just eat meat. Hate to tell those people that's not the best diet in the world. But maybe that's what you're willing to accept. But here's the thing, is as long as you're looking and you are open to new ideas, you will continually learn and find more accurate, inaccurate information. Right. And but that's the thing is when you're ready to accept the accurate information, it's going to make sense to you. You're going to like it. You're going to be attracted to it. So when we got three articles, one's the most accurate, one's the least accurate. Well, the majority of people are going to believe the least accurate one. It's because they want it.
You know, they, they want to believe that. That's where their capability lies, and it's perfectly fine, and it will help them. But if you're the person that looks at these three and you're saying, I think this one's the most accurate, which it is, well, then you're ready for it, right? Then, then you're, you're like, okay, let's go do this. How can you say definitively that most people like the least accurate information? I, I just look on what's most popular on the internet, you know? Okay, just give some examples. Okay, so like you look at health, right? Health is the easiest one. You look at what are the majority of people doing for health? Well, are do they have a diet of drinking lots of water a day, eating lots of spinach, greens, vegetables that are high in nutrients for you, that are organic and, and made the right way, and eating the least amount of processed foods? No, that's, that's, that's not the majority of people what they're doing. There's a large group of people who do do that, but that's out of all of society, that might be like, you know, five to 10% at the most. So, you know, that's, that's what I look at. I look at, you know, in terms of what people are looking at in the news. Are they looking at in the news the, the accurate research that has empirical data backing it that has been done by um, scientists and organizations that aren't being backed by big money businesses who are trying to promote products and whatnot. No, that's not what people are looking at. In fact, most of the time, I don't even know those studies going on. <laughs> people are looking at studies that are like being backed by these big businesses that they're actually hiring the scientists to do the research for them so that they can prove their product is good, right? Or something like that, right? They're looking at things that are like, you know, hey, this person down in Florida did this. I think that's like one of the taglines, right? <laughs> this person down in Florida did this? Yeah, like a man in Florida did this or a woman in Florida did this or... <laughs> I see that all the time. Oh. Right? But I just look at the news. I just look at what people are publicizing and what people want to hear about. Right. I hear about all of the crimes and the criminal acts and everything being publicized because what people want to hear. But I don't hear about all the good things that are happening in society. And those things are happening in society just as much, I think, as the bad things. Mm. But you don't hear about it because that's not what people are interested in. It's not what people want to learn. Right. So people sense? are actually attracted to this negative news that may be biased? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really necessarily anyone's fault, but people, it's like something in the body, they do studies on this, how, you know, like video games, it excites the mind, right? It does something to our, our chemicals in our brain that just excites it. And when you hear about these different things, right, it excites the mind. It takes a lot more discipline, a lot more self-control, a lot more stability to to realize you don't need it or to resist it and to do and read things and learn things that are much more beneficial to you. That's why when you look at who, what TV shows do people watch the most? Are they watching like Discovery Channel the most or are they watching like Cartoon Network and like are they watching like these actual like thing like History Channel, or are they watching this fake news that you see every day on, on all of our TV channels? Are, are we watching those shows that are actually educating you on history, on society, on science? Or are we watching things like, um, what is it? Uh, is it CIS, the Criminal Investigation Series things, you know? Or are we watching like things like, you know, like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, right? You look at what's, what's um, popular, right? You, you see, you know, these shows that are more entertainment centered are, are more popular and they're shows that are fact-based and, and teaching you something about life and society and the earth. Yeah, I, I remember there was this stat that over 70% of um, t television is violent. So like where the hero goes at the climax of the show, the hero beats up the enemy. And yes. so it's like very violent, could kill the enemy as well. 
And so that apparently is what people want to see versus a more accurate depiction would be, um, why don't you just be friends or like yes. figure out how to live in harmony. And it's just like what video games are the most popular. You know, just the other day, I found out what, um, oh, what is it? Grand Theft Auto was all about. I was wondering what was so popular. And then finally, I started playing with these students at this leadership activity that we had. And I'm watching one student with their character go up to another bystanding citizen, just another person in the game, and just deck them. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you can do that? <laughs> yeah. It's and, like... and then I started listening to the music and whatnot, and I start, whoa, this is like, there's cussing in this music. Yeah. yeah. And you can steal stuff and, like, <laughs> get in fights. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, it's like everyone acting out whatever they, whatever criminal ideas they had, they have an opportunity to act that out in that video game. And then the the music in the background kind of proliferates that, those thinking and those ideas. And then you get stars if you uh, get the most wanted on the list. So like you get the most police attention if you get the most amount of police attention, then like at first you get one star if you got a police on you. And then if you kill someone, a police officer, then it jumps to three. And then if you kill more people, then it's like it jumps to five. And then like helicopters are all around you and it's like really stressful. And then, and then they end up killing you. And then you start over and the excitement is getting those five stars and then you get shot. But you see, I'm not, you know, I, I don't think it's either a good thing or a bad thing. It's just what it is. But I just look at that. I see what's popular. I see what people want. Mm -hmm. And most of the students that play those games, they're, they're not going to commit criminal acts or whatnot. But it's what excites them. It's what they're looking for. It's, it's what they want to watch, what they want to be entertained by. Right? And, and so by just observation i see that most people when they're looking at three tv shows with accurate information on it most of them are going to want the one with the least accurate information on it the most excitement you know mm. and, um, i i think you know it's it's uh it's a human um humanistic type of thing to want that but it tells you that people are willing to accept um only so much accurate information and it, it's dependent upon you. So when you go out and look, don't worry about finding the most accurate information. You find the most accurate information that you're willing to accept, which is when you go out and look, the article you're most attracted to, hey, you go for it. So I, I guess the reason that I asked this question is because I thought that more success comes from more accurate information. What you're saying is whatever information is available, whatever seems most accurate to you, you just go with that because that's what you want anyways and you'll be more successful anyways because you want it and you want to do it. And that's what's most important about information. You got it. Um, what I'm saying is more accurate information is going to make you more successful. But you don't necessarily need the most accurate information. You just need accurate information a little bit more accurate than what you currently have. And you will naturally find that if you go looking for it. Right? You don't need to, to have like, you know, this, this huge filtering system to make sure you get 100% accurate information. Right? Because What's limiting your ability to know what's accurate and to follow it is not the availability of it or not the sifting through all the information for it, but it's your own ability to understand, accept, and to follow it. If you remember the cycle of learning, it's you see information, you think about it, you act upon it, and that leads to change, and change leads to more accurate information.
or perceiving more accurate information. So it doesn't matter if people are telling you around you, hey, this is the most accurate, and it is. It matters if you believe them. It matters if you're willing to follow it. And what I'm proposing is there are many people around you all the time telling you more accurate information that you're probably not willing to accept, that you probably can't even follow, even if you did accept it. So the best thing, instead of going out and thinking and trying to figure out what's accurate on your own, is just go out quickly, find something more than what you have, and follow it. And do it. And when you do it, it will lead to change. And the change will allow you to be able to get more accurate information and be able to be better and more successful. And I mean, drawing on the previous podcast where we talked about how you can make mistakes and stuff like that, if there is a way that we can avoid doing things that may be mistakes or construed as mistakes, how can we better identify accurate information so we don't have to go through? That's a very good question. And I got a really good answer for you that you're going to love. I'm waiting. The way to make the least amount of mistakes, find the most accurate information, be smarter. <laughs> <laughs> if you are smarter, you will make less <laughs> mistakes and you'll know more information and be able to recognize accurate information when you hear it. Okay, that's the best way. But I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> I, I do have some, some things for people out there who want to make less mistakes, no more accurate information. Now, these are things that you'll naturally do anyway, but maybe it will pique your interest in trying some of them. The first is use natural laws. Meaning the natural laws and things that you understand, use them as you're looking at more information. For example, people who have more empirical evidence, who've done more tests, usually, those are people who also have more accurate information. Those are articles you should believe more. News organizations, things, you know, people, researchers, those who have had more success with their research, more success with what they're telling you, those people usually are more accurate. And so if you're like having a lot of relatives tell you, hey, this is what you should do to be healthy, well, I naturally do na through natural laws i tend to believe the one who's the healthiest the more in shape the one with the less disease right yeah so you use natural laws to filter you'll get more accurate information okay that makes sense okay the next one use logic and common sense if logic tells you that vegetables help you be healthier and more exercise consistently every day will allow you to be more um, in fit, in shape, stronger. Live well, longer. if you read something, I don't care what it has behind it that tells you you don't have to eat vegetables or tells you you don't have to go and work out at all. Yeah, that's, that's not according to my logic and common sense, right? And so that's something that if you just use your logic and common sense, usually you can filter out a lot of false information. Third thing, find things that are simple, that you can understand. If you have to trust someone's opinion because you can't see it yourself, then it's complex, it's not simple enough. The most accurate things in life are the simplest. If it takes someone a really long time to explain why you should do something, it's probably not accurate or they probably don't understand it in the way they're supposed to. And so if someone really knows what they're talking about, they can explain it to you very simply, whether it's in writing or whether you're talking to them verbal. And there is one more. Find a mentor who's really intelligent and smart and believe them. <laughs> Chances are, 
because we grow so much in our life, and you're probably young, whoever's listening to this, if you're older, then maybe not so much. But life learning is an exponential curve, which means at the beginning of your life, what you believe is probably 180 degrees different than what's accurate. So when you hear something that's correct or 100% accurate, you're most likely not going to believe it. So if you find someone who you know is smart and they tell you something that's out there, don't just put it aside, take it into account, try to understand, try to experiment with it. And the more open you are to these people, then the more accurate information you're probably going to get. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, no, that does. Um, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jacob, for answering my question. And I appreciate learning more about this idea that maybe you don't need the most to accurate be successful. information. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. It would be great if you could take a moment to write us a review. For any questions, comments, or topics that you would like to have addressed on the show, email the team at team at leadaz.org. To learn more about the Leadership Society of Arizona, visit us at leadaz.org.